Okay, so I think I'm live. <laughs> this is Luke Smith, RuralVacantLand.com, coming to you live on YouTube. So it's Monday morning, and every Monday morning I come in and we talk about land. I, we, uh, I started this little show, I don't know, two years ago or three years ago or something, and started talking about land every Monday morning at 9 a.m. And I've been giving land away. I've given away tons of properties. And uh, part of the way I started giving away mailers, I had a hard time keeping up with that. hope to give mailers away in the future. But I'm still giving away land. And as long as, as, long as we got some land to give away, I'll keep processing the land to give away. Um, we may run out of, of good land to give away pretty soon. But for now, I'm going to keep, keep, uh, keep running the paperwork to give land away. So towards the end of this call, if you stick around, I'm going to give away a piece of land. And so I'm going to change up the format a little bit because um, I've been thinking about it. And I think it'd be more exciting. It'd be more interactive to uh, uh, ask you guys for help on uh, um, researching these properties. So people keep calling me and asking, which is great. I think they're great calls, but they keep asking, what's a good property to buy and resell? You know, which one should I buy? Which one should I buy for cash and resell on terms? Which one should I buy from you and go put with a realtor and market on the market? Which one's a good one to buy, go get pictures of and resell? Which, what's a good one to buy and split up and sell the pieces? What's a good one to um, you know, put in a driveway and a water well and a septic system and uh, power lines and you know, bring all the utilities and get it ready to build and sell? Which one's a good one to put a house on and sell? Which one's a good one to put a mobile home on and sell? Like it's all the same topic. Which, which is, where's my money going to be best invested buying these properties, turning them into something and selling them? And so um, here's the question for today's free land. I'm going to do the, ask the question now and it's going to be a show trying to get to the answer. And whoever comes up with the best answer, um, and I think it's going to be hard to judge, but I'm going to judge the, the best answer. Um, whoever comes up with the best answer, I'll give you a free piece of land and you can do whatever you want with the land. You can uh, go resell it. You could have me resell it. You could uh, keep it forever. Keep, give, it to, give it to your kids or grandkids or favorite uh, charity or whatever you want to do. Um, or you can just, you can always give it back to me too <laughs> if you don't want it. Cause I like these properties. Um, okay, so... The question is, what's the most economic property on ruralvacantland.com to go buy and resell? And um, there's a lot of facets to that. I think we all approach that question differently. Like, is it just buy it and resell it? Is it just buy it on the website, change the price, and keep the same ad on the website? Is it, uh, do we go put it on different websites? Do we go market it on Facebook? or Whatever you're trying to do with the property. I mean, feel free to throw that in there. I always thought the easiest way to up the price in these properties is buying them at the right price in the first place, buying them really cheap and then selling them dear, but not, not like uh, selling them at market price and or buying them cheap and adding finance, adding uh, terms like people can buy them for payments over time and the payments over time equal a lot more than, than what I bought these things for or what I could have sold them for on cash, cash price. So there's a lot of different ways of looking that, looking at that, and um, I think if we all go, if we have different properties in mind that are posted on the website, whether they're your properties, if you're posting them on the website, or you're shopping properties and you you're uh, comparing and contrasting different deals, maybe the audience and the the crowd can come up with pros and cons about these different properties and the economics of buying them and reselling them. So let's jump into the um, comments for a sec and then um, jump into the website. And if you guys have recommendations of which properties we should start with, I think that would be great too. Like, hey, this one over here, this one in this county, this, if you have an APN, that would be nice. Um, but size, price, county kind of thing, I could probably find it that way too. Okay, so comments. Um, Mr. Woolley says, good morning. I think he's chiming in from Nigeria if I, if I got the right guy. We got an international crowd. Thanks for coming on, Wooly. Yasser Lingren, good morning, Luke. Good morning, Yasser. Yasser keeps doing these crazy good uh, owner financing deals on ruralvacantland.com. So if you guys haven't seen his deals, you can go to ruralvacantland.com and go to listings. And under the listings tab, there's an owner's tab. 
And if you go to that, you'll see Las Yasser and you'll see his properties that he's got. He just keeps doing really, really good owner financing and he'll, he'll customize the plan to you too. Arthur Leslie says, good greetings. Greetings, Arthur. Donut Hole, hello, hello. So a bunch of people saying hi. How'd somebody get a username of Y? That's got to be like <laughs> the shortest, easiest one ever. Uh, Shelby Land Deals, good morning. Good morning, uh, Curtis. Um, Iowawa, hi, Luke and your intrepid land followers. Hello, Iowawa. Uh, Redefine Living, morning, Luke. Morning, guys. You know, he brought me a, a date palm the other day or a couple months ago. Oh, maybe even a year ago, <laughs> half a year ago. <laughs> and uh, I still, I've had the date palm in my yard. I've moved twice since then. I keep moving the date palm, I've been watering it. Some of the branches are dry right now. I should give it some more water. But thank you for that date palm. Um, Joseph Johnson, good morning, Luke. Gloria Jean, good morning. Frenchie, good morning, guys. Good morning, Brian Harley. Good morning, good morning. A bunch of people saying good morning. Evelyn Salinas, good morning from... Las, I don't know. Oh, Las Vegas. There we go. Yo, wow, wow. Punch up like for Luke if you can. Well, punch up like for Luke if you can. Thanks, Yo, wow, wow. Uh, Redefine Living. Uh, Luke, I've been trying to get a hold of you or someone you work with about a property I purchased from you. Um, if you got a question, I'll try to answer it right now. I try to answer questions as much as I can. I get kind of flooded in communications. That's why I do these call these calls every Monday morning is you can always chime in here and ask questions, right? So if you're trying to get like, uh, it's probably tax season, probably asking about taxes or something, right? Um, or the location, <laughs> let me know how I can help. Uh, Frenchy, Arizona for sure. Keith, good morning, Mr. Luke. I don't want any free land. What I would like is some land that I can start an upscale camping business on, like glamping. Oh, there you go. Let me think about that. So good glamping i think you would want to be um let me i'm just thinking out loud here like you're going to want to be close to some destination right to drive drive uh drive business and uh, i think one of those destinations is um at least one that i have in mind um is between san francisco and uh um, why can't I think of the name of the park? <laughs> Big Yosemite, between San Francisco and Yosemite. So where's Yosemite? Here's Yosemite here. We've got a property just down the hill. It might not be big enough, but I don't know if you're thinking like full-on campground with like 100 different campsites um, trying to get economics out of it or a place that you could put just one, one or two uh, like serious glamping kinds of properties. But this property here, I'm still zooming in on it. Um, I'm just thinking because it's in between San Francisco and Yosemite that you could put some fancy yurts on here or some, something like that that people could go glamp it up, right? So I was asking $34,999, basically $35,000, so it's five acres. So it's five acres in Mariposa County. And uh, it's just, it's not very far from Yosemite. Um, okay, so it's like a triangle or a pie shaped property. There's a little pond down the way here. There's a couple neighboring houses. Um, there's a road on two sides. There's a paved road on one side. And there's a dirt road on one side. And I think there's street view. You can get back in there. Um, so I don't know if this is going to be the right property or not. But I think the location works really well for what you're thinking. It's got some trees and bush. And uh, yeah, it's just all this side of the road. There's five acres there. Some rocks. I mean, you could. it depends on what you would uh, build into the camping um, the campsite. Another one that might be fun. I don't know if it would be, if it would do the audience or right or not, but I think it's really green and lush. There are a couple of them up in the Washington ones, like Seattle area properties might be fun for people to go camping outside of Seattle. So if we go up to the Seattle area, um, we've got a good scattering of properties going on in here now the different islands and things a lot of those are brought to us by um uh geez i'm so bad at names another member on ruralvacantland.com this one here could potentially be a good campsite it's got a creek running through the middle of the property it's a triangle shaped property and there's little driveways on either side of this and it gets steep back in here 
but there's a flat spot near the creek. So it's more of a camping property than one you could really build on because they got setbacks from the creek going set. I think it's a uh, 100 foot setback if it's a non-fish bearing creek. And I think this is categorized as a non-fish bearing creek. It's like 200 foot setback if it's categorized as a fish bearing creek. But I don't believe this is, a, even though it's called Salmon Creek, it's steep as can be in here. So I don't believe it's uh, deemed a fish bearing creek. And so I think on this side, you could do a good campsite in here. And I think we can do street view on this one too. So it's just like trees, like a wall of trees. That's the other side of the street. So on the side of the street that I'm talking about, it's just like thick trees back in there. Um, but the guy that had it before built a, a, a driveway, which is overgrown. That was like in the early 70s, he built a driveway that's totally overgrown now. But he says it's level with the road and you can drive back in there if you cleaned out those trees. So that's maybe one in the vicinity of San Francisco would pay for glamping and one in the vicinity of, of uh, Seattle that would pay for glamping. Um, let's see. So we'll go back. Um, this one back here might be a little further out of range of Seattle, but this one could work as well. There's already a camper on this property. Um, so there's a creek to the north. There's a driveway that goes back in there. We can draw up the Google guy on this one too. See if we can find the driveway. Well, we're on the wrong side of the street, but here's the driveway. So the driveway on this one goes back in and um, I mean, it goes back in and around and then we've got pictures on the website of what it looks like when you go back in there. Let's see if I can make this happen while we're on live. And if you guys are researching and finding economics and property, so whoever can find the most economic property on ruralvacantland.com, I don't have any one in mind. I'm just, I'm open to suggestions. I think we'll go research those properties and talk about pros and cons and what the economics may be. We'll look at them in the marketplace, like what competition might be, like if we could buy them for, I don't know, $1,000 and sell them for $5,000. Is that more economic than buying it for 50000 and selling it for 100000 I don't know. It takes more capital to do that, but maybe the economics are better buying for 50 and selling for 100. Um, that's part of what I, I haven't figured. I haven't figured that far out yet. <laughs> I thought I'd listen to what you guys have to say. And we figure it out together and we come up with the most economic looking one from the crowd and give whoever points that one out a free piece of land. OK, so it will be one of these crazy Arkansas properties. I don't know if you've been watching, but I've been posting more and more of these Arkansas properties as the paperwork's been coming through on them. Okay, so we we're looking for um, pictures as you get in that road. So I had a guy, someone go over there and take actual pictures. So here's that same, you know, here's the picture taken person taking a picture of that same driveway. So here's that same driveway we were just looking at from Earth or from Google, Google Street View. And here's the guy actually going in there and taking pictures. And then it's got the no trespassing sign and the welcome sign next to each other. A little bit of mixed, <laughs> mixed. Uh, but as you get back in there, there's one house that uses this driveway too. But as you get back further in there, um, you keep going and you get into the bush. I mean, it looks like, you know, here's an old car. It'd be fun to take a picture with if you're out glamping in the woods. You know, you, this would be your trail. You know, you go back in there and you're going to have to cut some bush and cut some cut some stuff, but look at these trees. I mean, it's just big, beautiful trees, like moss hanging off of them. There's another old truck or something in the bushes, but there's ferns coming up like through the door panels and things. And here's your trail. So there is a trail back in there. You just have to cut and uh, trim and go put like a fancy yurt or a tiny A-frame or a, set it up for people to go camp something fancy in like a private style campground that would be your glamping thing. Something you could put on Airbnb for like $100 a night, right? Or maybe even more, uh, depending on how well you set it up. So here's a tree, some more trees, some trees and bushes. And as you get back in there, it gets nice and thick. So this is the road still. It looks like that road really needs some trimming. Uh, but it's there, you know, you can drive back in there. There's a big open space you could use. I mean, this could be like your campground. This could be your campsite. You could have a bonfire in the middle and uh, have the camp stuff all set up around there. I mean, I think this one would be set up perfect for it if you could get the draw. You might want to put in a new bridge. This bridge looks like it's uh, seen better days. You don't want your campers falling through that bridge. But I mean, it's just some timber. You just lay some timbers on there. 
this is Washington. It shouldn't be that hard to get some timber. And here's a motorhome that's already in there or a trailer or an RV or whatever you call this thing. Um, so you know nobody complains about these things back in there. It's been there forever. You could probably clean it up, haul that out, or put in a new one. You could put a new one in there for people to go use. I rented an RV on a alpaca farm in, uh, San, in uh, San Luis Obispo County this last spring. That was fun with the kids. <laughs> it's up on a hill looking over. There's an old barn or something on the property. I'm not sure if it's on the property or next door. Um, yeah, so look at this tree. I mean, just one of these. I used this picture as a backdrop for one of the live shows in the past. So that's uh, Skagit County, Washington, $29,000, 3.8 acres. I think that could be a good campsite. So let's uh, let's try to get back to the economics. I mean, feel free to ask questions. I'm here to answer questions. But if we could find economic properties, it would be good to buy off the website, like posted prices, and then go resell them for more. Um, that's what I'm looking for. Um, so that was for Keith. Little Keith. Um, bunch of good mornings. Good morning, everybody. Thanks for coming in, listening, asking questions. This is great. This is this is what I'm all about. Uh, Dominique says, Hi there, Luke. Looking for a property in Oregon or North California for myself. Okay, so northern california or oregon let's uh let's kill this one let's kill this one let's go back to the map so i'm on the map search well let's get to get it on on the screen so i'm on the map search ruralvacantland.com and we just zoomed into that one in skagit for keith looking for a good campground and i'm not sure if i'm barking up the right tree or what he's thinking about for glamping or what area he's from or wherever but um, those are the ones i was thinking of there's probably a bunch of them throughout the seattle area that would work for it um, so if we go down to so Northern California or Oregon, I mean, to me, it's like, do you pay taxes? <laughs> uh, you know, if you're buying stuff in California, you're paying real, you're not real estate taxes, you're paying, um, retail taxes, you know, so if you're buying your groceries and your goods and your a car and all this kind of stuff in California, you're, you're paying California prices, gasoline. If you go to Oregon, um, you get Oregon gas prices. You get, uh, you know, you don't have the retail. I mean, you still got to buy your gas from like a gas station that has somebody pumping it for you. I think, I think Oregon has that, or maybe I'm mixing them up. Um, they're trying to keep jobs. Um, but they, they've got, uh, it's just less tax. You know, people from California go to Oregon and get out of the taxes. They go to there to retire and they don't want to, you know, if you're not doing the, the jobby job, like why live in California and pay the taxes? California's got a lot of great jobs that pay really well, but Oregon, I mean, it's a heck of a lot cheaper, right? So if you're thinking Northern California, Oregon, uh, I'm going to try to push you across the border to the Oregon side because of taxes. Uh, the properties in Northern California don't, from my experience, don't sell very well, like getting close to the border. Um, it's kind of like the backside of California, the closer you get to Arizona where things are cheap or Nevada, people would rather just go live on the other side of the border um, or live really close. Some, some of the people that buy land from me want to get the, um, the benefits of California, the social system that's going on in California, but they want to buy buy sell trade uh on the other side of the border in arizona or nevada and that's totally fine to try to work on the other side but live in california um i understand that too so if, as you get close to the border the economics start changing like a lot of the shopping tends to be on the other side of the border not on the california side so let's go let's go just southern oregon so southern oregon um let's see what this one is this might be the california side I don't know what property this is. Someone else posted this one on the website. Aaron English has this one. He's asking $5,000 or $500 down, $100 a month for 150 months. It's in Modoc County. It's 1.4 acres. This is Northern California. This is just before you get to Oregon and um, like right by the border. It's by this, by this lake. You can see the lake on the map. These are around the area, looking at mountains in the area. Um, so he's got 
buttons on here. You could buy it now or, or do the payment plan. So that's, that's about as close as you're going to get to Oregon without being in Oregon. And it's right on this lake. So it's right next to this, this big goose lake. Um, let's zoom out a little bit more. So as you get up into Oregon, if you go up Klamath Falls way, like I've got cousins in Klamath Falls in that area. Um, not that you guys care, but that's just what I'm always thinking about. If you go past that towards the Sprague River in this area, um, Betty, I mean, you get a lot of cheaper properties up this way. It's cheaper to get some acreage. The properties are pretty spread out and you get some nice river action. I think it's good fly fishing and just good scenery. There's cows along some of these roads and then there's trees on the, usually the trees are on the topography and different facing different directions, um, but not usually on the flats. So it's like they get um, sun baked or something on the flats. I'm not sure why the trees don't grow on the flats. But if we look at some of these properties, so here's 21 acres. I'm not sure what kind of Oregon property you're looking for, but if you're looking for rural vacant land, uh, here's Aaron English, 9,997 bucks or $1,500 down, $250 a month for 120 months. Aaron does a lot of these deals, um, a lot of owner financing deals, keeps turning properties over pretty fast. He buys them right and he sells them well. And um, yeah, so I don't know if there's gonna be any street view in this area. Here's some street view. So this isn't to the actual property, but you get some shots of the area. So you got scattered bush, uh, like lower bush and scattered trees around the area. And so usually where there's more topography, there's more of these trees where there's less topography, there's more of these bush in this area, looking at the, at the climate. So you have to go search through each one of these properties and see which one might work for you. But these are, there's a good selection up here. Um, oh, this one's sold and it's not marked as sold. Let me um, see if I can fix that. I spent a bunch of time this weekend going through and trying to update a lot of these ones that are sold and uh, just trying to make the website more accurate. So as I see them, I keep pointing them out. Um, so we'll get that fixed. The uh, but most of these green ones should be marked um, for sale. There's 115 acres. Look at that. 115 acres, $49,000 or 5,000 down and 500 a month for 179 months. So for 5,000 bucks down and $500 a month, you can get 115 acres up here. Like that, that, that's some good size. You know, you can get some size um, property. You could have a bunch of horses or cows or here's a 20 acre one. Um, Let's see, I think that's the same one. 39.4, basically 40 acres. So we've got numerous ones in this area. And I always like this stream. Let's see, I've had, had one over here sold. Oh, this is, this one's sold too. Let me try to fix this while, uh, while I see it. Um, yeah, so the office fixed that one and it's fixed this one. Okay, so back to the map. Um, so it bugs me to get bad data on the website. Trying to keep it accurate, guys. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, so those are some of the uh, Oregon ones. Um, other than that, I mean, you're going further north, but those are the ones we have closer to the border. Okay, so back to the comments. Um, why, I will definitely be one of your customers. It's been a dream of mine to purchase land like a land you sell, so you will hear from me very soon, Luke. Thanks, that's from Why. That's the guy with the, the really good username on there. <laughs> Refine Living, I'll give you another date poem when I buy my next property from you. Nice, there we go. Elena Datamo, good morning from Los Angeles. Good morning, Elena. Well, Mr. Woolley says, yes, I am your devoted listener from Nigeria. I have told some of my friends in Nigeria about how amazing you are. <laughs> Thanks, Woolley. Um, that's cool. That's neat. We're, we're spreading far. We're getting, get the African comment or the African continent covered. Um, 
It's a title. Okay, Redefine Living says it's a title transfer issue. I sent an email. Okay, so let me try to figure that out. Um, taking some notes. I think it was like a San Bernino five acre. If I got the right property, I'll try to find it. Um, checking if you have any land in Nebraska. I don't believe we have any land in Nebraska. I'll zoom out. I really don't think we have any Nebraska land. A lot of the Nebraska land it is, uh, is, um, yeah, we don't have anything in Nebraska. It's it's very similar priced. It's hard to get differentials in pricing that make sense as a land dealer to take advantage of. Um, so that's back to pricing. Like I think the more unique properties, the ones that are weirder, that are in the mountains or on the coast or on the something different about them, not just a square piece of farmland that looks very similar to the square piece of farmland that's next door and thousand other ones around that in multiple directions and you're just measuring like the variables of water or the degree of nutrients in the soil or something for the last couple hundred dollars in acre pricing I mean it's uh it's not my specialty to so these like homesteading kinds of properties where you could go build on them go turn them into a, a place to live or camp or have fun with I think you're more eccentric they're more artsy they're more um unknown of how much to buy them for and sell them for and that uh, that leaves more more room for profit um, more room for error too I mean there's a lot less data to go off of it's a lot more guessing and you know like let's see if it sells <laughs> uh, you know people are saying I buy the thing for a stupid low price but yeah then it doesn't sell it's like how low was that price I really bought it for um, it's a different calculation uh, always love watching your properties. Monte Cali. I'm just wondering. Okay. Here, look, he's got two of them. All right, let's get, uh, skip some. Okay. Redefine living's title issue. Um, Nebraska Bridget says, good morning. Jovi says, good morning. Monte Cali here. I think he, he asked a couple of them. Who here has received land from Luke? Um, Chris Kane says waterfront and lakes best. Yeah, I want to target more waterfront and lakes. I mean, that's that's like on my hit list. I got a, a lot of stuff's on my hit list. I should keep biting off more than I can chew. <laughs> uh, N2 Wishwan something. I think buy low for sure with plans of selling something in future, sometime in future. In between buy and sell, upgrade property with means then sell. It gives you a chance to watch the market instead of just flipping. Yeah, so um, this person with the weird username, N2 Wishwan, um, is saying buy and fix it up and then sell it. Uh, Iowawa says, I have bought several direct from Luke. Thanks, Iowawa. Chris Kane, what about Clear Lakes? Yeah, Clear Lakes. I've mailed, I mailed offers to Clear Lakes in the past. I didn't get anything. Maybe I just didn't price them right, or maybe there's too much competition, or I'm not sure. So look, Clear Lakes is just north of San Francisco, if we're talking about the same Clear Lakes. And there's a county up here called Lake County, I think it is, right? Um, where's the lakes? Here's Clear Lake. Here's the lake. Okay. So it's a big lake and it's like some uh, volcanic action around the lake. I don't know, it's a really big old lake. And um, the Clear Lake is the, the town and there's different properties all around this area. A lot of it's very friendly and open to mobile home living. And um, some of it's got problems with water supplies and others have regulatory problems of what you can and can't use the, the land for. I got kind of lost in some of that due diligence on some deals that did come in. I never ended up buying them, um, but I never, I never ended up pulling off any deals in that area. Like I didn't understand it well enough. The numbers didn't seem to make a whole lot of sense. Like it's pretty cheap. The properties are pretty cheap in the area and 
Um, the prices I could buy them at was like, you know, the difference of doing title to buy and sell them or something. And it wasn't, it didn't seem like it was economic. Sorry, I'm in it for the economics, but it just didn't seem to work with the deals that I had run into in that area. Um, hi, uh, Jeep Gene. Hi, home and property hunters. Hey, Jeep. Monty Kelly, are you using your land or did you just buy and haven't started using it? So Monty Kelly was asking if anyone on here has bought land from me. And then he's asking if we're using the land or did you just buy and haven't started using it? I always wonder about that too. Like how many people, how many of the people that buy land from me actually go use it? And I hear stories about people using it and building and making things happen on their properties. But I think those are not all the people that buy the land. I think a lot of the people that buy this land store it away. They keep it for future generations. Um, and they keep it for a dream. They keep it for the future. They keep it for when their economics will allow them uh, job-wise, time-wise, not just economics, but multiple layers of their life allow them to go work on this land, build a cabin, build a second place to retire to, or a place to spend on the weekends or the summers or, or whatever it is their dream is. Um, and that's where a lot of the land comes from too. People bought this land in the past with dreams to do something with it and they never, their dreams never materialized. And there's hundreds of thousands of thousands of thousands of properties all over the world that are like that. And uh, they keep turning over. Some places they turn over faster than others until they get into the right hands or somebody goes and puts them to work. Whether it's farming the land or building a homestead or making it happen. And that creates a lot of opportunity for other people too um, to pick those up and go work on them, go make them happen. And um, yeah, so I, I think it's, it's just natural. Not all the properties are built on. McLeod uh, says, always love watching your properties. Thanks, McLeod. Monty Kelly, I'm just wondering because I've been watching for a year or more and have see people complaining, not sure if they were trolls or not, but I'm interested in buying land, wanting to see what you guys think. Yeah, I think it's great when people complain. I mean, I think it's a lot more real. I mean, I don't like complaints. Nobody likes complaints. I think it's a lot more real when somebody complains. They say, hey, I have an issue. I have a problem and uh, let's get this fixed. I'm like, okay, we'll go get it fixed. We'll figure out how to make it happen. And uh, a lot of other dealers, land dealers or other businesses don't have an outlet for that. Like, you know, social media, YouTube, for example, that we're on right now, I mean, it can help spread uh, a business in the reach and what I'm trying to say or market or explain or do, but it also helps uh, spread bad stuff. If I'm doing something wrong, or I'm not doing, you know, I'm not fulfilling my promises. I'm not delivering on what I say I'm going to do. And the same with other dealers on my website and other, you know, it spreads the good and the bad really fast. It makes a much more efficient market. It points out people that are doing wrong things really fast is what social media does. A lot faster than Better Business Bureau or Yelp or uh, others, you know, those are older generations of what we've got going on in the comments or the live live chat section right now. This is live. These are real people. I didn't like pay these people to show up or whatever. These are people that are interested in buying and selling land. And they're coming on a Monday morning uh, to talk about land, which I think is, is really cool. And I'm really grateful for that. Um, I'm grateful for you asking your question, Monty, too. So I think it's good. It's good. Uh, good. Um, Due diligence, if you will. You well, uh, just got titles on all recently. I like the appreciation pro on these rather than 2% or less on my CDs. Yeah, so he's, so Iowawa is comparing these properties and the appreciation, um, appreciation, oh, okay, appreciation on these rather than 2% or less on my CD. So he's saying it's better than keeping money in the bank account is by holding land. And I think there's a lot of people like that, that, uh, you know, I, I used to be a penny stock broker and a lot of the stocks were gold and silver stocks, a lot of metal stocks, a lot of natural resource stocks. And people would want to protect their capital from, uh, def from uh, inflation, from the dollar going away. You know, the last hundred years, the dollar's down like 98 or 99% in value, right? I mean, that kind of propensity just keeps happening over time. The dollar loses its value just as governments keep printing money to pay bills. 
um, and keep up with all the debts we have in the U.S. The, uh, the land is not a currency. It's not, you know, it's, it, the government can't just go print more of it. Yeah, they've got parks and reserves and stuff that they could put up for sale. So I guess they could put more on the market, but they're just not creating, they can't just continuously create more like fiat currency. And so a lot, of, a lot of the same people, a lot of the same mindset, the people that buy gold and silver as investments and stores of value, I think also buy land. Land is another nice store of value. And sure, you can't pick up and take off with it and run away with it. You're always a target for like taxes to come around. But the taxes on land are from the county, not from the federal government. So it's a little different. You can pick and choose which counties. You can hold properties in multiple counties. And hopefully the federal government doesn't start taxing land. Um, by when they get more and more in financially trouble, <laughs> like, I don't know, I'm going to move on. Monty says, good morning, Luke. Rocky Greer, yo, 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 hello from Florida. Hello, Rocky. Uh, Greg G, I bought some from Luke, but due diligence is key. Yeah, you always have to do due diligence on who's selling the land to you, who's, what land you're buying. I mean, I, I buy these properties sight unseen, right? You're buying properties from somebody that bought them sight unseen. And I'm trying to explain those properties to you the best I can. Uh, but I mean, the real due diligence going out, looking at these things, making sure that they're really there. And the road works and the neighbors aren't crazy. And I mean, you could buy a house in town with a realtor and everything and the neighbors are still crazy. How are you going to know until you move in and meet them, right? Like there's, there's never enough due diligence on these things. Um, Greg G says, I'm happy with my purchase. Thanks, Greg. Chris Kane, Hornbrook. I don't know what you mean by Hornbrook, Chris. Um, Monte Cali, what are the pros and cons of buying from Luke? He, he has awesome prices for land that makes me think it's too good to be true. What's the final point, if any? Fine print, if any. Yeah, good question. So, Monty, that's like my sales pitch is low prices, right? So if you watch enough of these shows, you'll know that I buy, I buy these properties by making cash prices to people that don't have properties marketed. Um, and so when they're not marketing the properties, hit some buttons here. When they're not marketing the properties, it's more of, I need the money right now. I didn't realize I could sell the land that fast. Uh, I could use the money for fill in life emergency right there. Um, let them tell that story. But some reason they need that money, they take my offer. They take the offer, they get the cash, they go. They wanna close fast and make it easy without going through the traditional real estate channels to settle that thing and get paid eventually someday with all the costs involved in it. And I get these properties. And in my business plan, my business model is to sell those things fast so I can go do it again I don't want to sit on them for years and years like a lot of people do with land that put them up for sale for retail prices. And so when you put them up for sale at retail prices with a realtor in the area, they'll put a sign out there and they hope somebody calls someday. I mean, sometimes a neighbor calls and snaps it right up. But most of the time, or a lot of the time, the property just sits there until somebody has a dream and a wish and they want that specific property for some reason and they're willing to pay the price that's posted. And, um, you know, that's, that's one way to compose a real estate market. But I think the prices that I post are more of where the market is happening in a relatively normal amount of time. And sometimes I miss, I miss those prices. Like one I got on the website right now, if we go to the website and we go to listings, um, so I'm on the listings page. If we go to the last, the oldest listings on here, right? So the oldest stuff on here is the ones that have been on the website the longest. They're not my partner's properties, like posting properties on the website. They're all my properties because I need to go work on these things and make them happen. Um, well, I think there's one more after this. If we want, I think we're going to go back to page 37. Yeah, so this 80, 80 acres in uh, San Bernino, um, I just visited this property a couple weeks ago, got some new pictures, I was just uploading some more pictures on it um, this last week, but it's, we're asking $49,000, and really, I, I sold this property um, 
two years ago or something. I bought it for one price, sold it at a higher price. The guy that bought the property wanted me to resell it at a yet higher price. And that's, that's where we're at now. We're at the yet higher price after I've already bought and sold it. So I'm trying to help the guy out and get this thing posted all over the place. Maybe somebody will buy it. It's a beautiful property. It's a really good price compared to everything else in the area, but not, not as good price as the ones I normally have on the website. So the next oldest one on the property is 30 acres in San Marino County. Um, I'm asking 5999 I've been lowering the price on that one. Uh, but the one I was thinking about is this one right here, 3999 Like I paid 4000 bucks for this property. I'm trying to sell it for less than I paid for it. I had a brush guy go out and clean up the trees on the property. Um, I paid for pictures on the property. I didn't actually pay for pictures on this one. I paid for pictures on other ones in the area, but not this one. Maybe that's why it's not selling. <laughs> but it's 0.36 acres. It's got water, power. Um, it doesn't have sewer on this, this particular lot. But it's got some nice trees, and it's got a neighbor down the road. It costs a lot to hook up the water and the power. And uh, when I bought the property, I bought like a dozen others like it. And most all of them have sold, all but maybe one of them. This is one of the last ones in this particular neighborhood. This is Mendocino County, California. It's Brook Trails Vacation Village. That hasn't sold. Nobody's gone for it. Nobody's picked this one up. Um, so usually I can figure out the prices, but I don't always. Like I, they, they don't always work. So you could do the same thing. You could buy one of these things from me and then end up selling it for less someday because it just the market's not there. It's just not. I flooded the market with too many of them. And, and the market's like... May, we'll do like maybe one of those properties every two or three months will sell, not not like 12 at a time. Um, so yeah, maybe that's a con. I don't know if I'm explaining myself, but you know, I do all kinds of research and I still make mistakes. It's Those are one of the cons of buying one of these properties. Um, other fine print, like that particular property, it costs money to hook up the power line. Like they have a... a I don't know what you call it. Like they're trying to get their capital back from building the power line in the first place. So they charge like 11,000 bucks to hook up the power there, uh, which is a lot. The power line's like right in front of the property. And then they charge um, like another 11 or $12,000, 12,000 $12, something to hook up the water. And the water line's right in front of the property. Um, and you gotta build a septic system. I mean, you're talking probably 30 grand by the time you get your water power and uh, septic set up. It's a lot of money. Um, that kind of fine print is on every one of these properties. How much does it cost to develop that property into something? This particular property has fine print of, you know, how much does it cost to hook up the, the power? It's not a $1,500 power hookup with a power line right in front of the property. Like some of them are, it's a $11,000 hit, you know? So it's very property specific what the fine print is. Um... Ringo Starr, Luke, how can I get an address from an APN number in Arizona? How can I get an address from an APN number in Arizona? There's a good question. Let's, uh, let's just pull one up and see. Let's fumble through it. Um, so let's go, let's go Arizona. Let's say you're looking at one of the properties on the website. And I'm going to give you a couple different versions because it depends on how much has been has happened on the property or not. Let's pull up this property I got over here. This property is like 20 acres. If this is the right one. Yes, yeah, 20 acres. This is in Arizona. This one's been on the website for a bit. I've had like five people going to buy this. Going to, going to, going to higher and higher prices. And I keep lowering the price. Nobody seems to buy it. It's gone into title a couple times and fallen out for whatever reason. People don't actually have the money, I guess. Um, it's got an APN. And everybody that goes to look at it just loves this property. Um, people that actually get out there. There's a little uh, shack down at the bottom of the hill. Um, but there's there's a hill on the property. So you get in there. Let's see if we get the pictures. Explain it a little bit while we got it pulled up. And we'll look for an address and see why this is a good example. 
Um, so it's a, just a rectangle. There's a little road that goes through the property and there's a driveway that goes up with a pad. This is a, this is the top of the hill and this is the bottom of the hill. There's a pad here you could build a house on to get views out over the area. Fine print, guy was asking, Monty was asking about fine print. This particular property, there is a proposed power line that goes north of the property, like along here somewhere, called uh, Sunzilla. And if you look up Sunzilla, it's going to be like the big crazy power line. It's not funded. They got the permits. They got the right of the way, but they don't have the money. They have a business plan. The business plan is to raise money. Uh, to build like crazy amounts of solar panels in New Mexico and then hook up all these crazy solar panels to this crazy power line that goes across hundreds and hundreds of miles of desert to Tucson and then sell power to Tucson that goes into the Phoenix market. Are they ever going to pull that project off? I don't know. I mean, it was, I think it was set up before 2008 or around there. Or it's, it's an old project, right? I've called them and asked a bunch of times, like, are they are they funded? Do they have any plans? And they just dodge calls, they dodge answers. They just, they got the thing shelved. But if you go to do all your due diligence on the property, you find out about this power line. And the power line, I can't get all the way up there. Um, you know, you're gonna be up here on the hill, but you'll be looking down at the power line. So you'd have a power line, big ugly power line in your view someday, if they actually fund that and build it. I think that's one of the main reasons this thing hasn't sold. So I keep lowering the price on it. Hopefully somebody will understand that power line doesn't really have a hope. And then uh, go build it. So here's the topography. So I think this route over here is maybe where the power line goes. Maybe that's the power line route. But there's a power line going through a big one proposed in this area. It's not, it's not built. I'm not 100% sure what that is. That's a road or if that's where they propose to build it. Um, okay, so we're gonna look for, you know, so here's a picture of the driveway. It's pretty rugged. I know I had some more pictures. Here's pictures of the area. So this gives you an idea. I don't know what happened to all the pictures. So we got an APN number, um, but we don't have an address. We've got a, GPS coordinates down here. We could try to see if Google comes up with something. I don't know the full details of your question. Like if you're trying to get a mailing address to set up your home there, or if you're trying to find it. Like if you're trying to find the property, just give up on the give up on the mailing address and go down to the ad where it's got the GPS coordinates and click on that in your phone and it'll give you driving directions. If you're trying to find out like kind of an address you're trying to show the property off to somebody who doesn't understand gps or something let's see if we get google well we don't have street view over here um let's see if we've got uh let's see if there's a name on this road it's gonna be unnamed road number one or something Campo Benito Road up here. It's just unnamed road. Okay, so here's like a really hard example of finding an address. Um, no street view, no road, um, no road name over here. El Ronseno, I don't know. <laughs> so Google just comes up with San Manuel, Arizona, and some GPS, um, no street view. Okay, so if you're trying to homestead this property and get a mailing address, you're gonna go to the post office and you're gonna give them the legal description of the property. And it's gonna be the legal description from your deed or it might be on this ad too. So if we go down, where's the ad? Yeah, so there's a legal description in the ad. I got the wrong wrong thing on here. So the legal description in the ad section, township range. Um, you're going to give them that legal description and see if they can go off of there. Or you're going to have to give them hillbilly directions, turn here, turn there, and they're going to pull out their maps to see if they can find it. Um, and what they're going to do is because there's nothing built on this property, 
is they're going to say, well, we can't give you a, a mailing address, but we can give you a, uh, a 911 address. And a 911 address, they won't mail stuff there, but they'll give you like a street and a house number kind of thing. And so that street and house number thing, they'll tell you what the name of the street is and the house number to it, is they will, um, uh, you can use that to like get lumber delivered from Home Depot or some lumber store, right? Uh, you could get cement and cement blocks and get the cement truck to deliver your foundation after you, you get it all set up. And those kinds of contractors, you could give them that 911 address and they can come find it with that. Um, and then later on as you're building and you're getting the thing under full like construction that's happening and you keep asking the post office, they might change it from a 911 address to an actual address. They're going to want you to really be living there in most cases before, but this land is so far out in the middle of nowhere that they're probably not going to drive out there to check and see. So there might be like, um, let's see if we find where's the nearest, I don't know, over here somewhere. Let's see if there's a branch. Let's see if one of these roads, so here's a little road turning off where there's a street view. If we look at this, there might be a whole bunch of mailboxes here. And um, there might be, there might not be. <laughs> but if it's what I'm thinking, there'll be like, you know, a whole row of mailboxes and five gallon buckets. And this isn't the right road for that. Um, but your mailbox would be out at like one of these kinds of roads. Let's find another one of these turn off roads. This is going to be maybe a mail center for a bunch of houses. But these are, this is the actual neighborhood over here. This isn't going to be a good example. You know what I'm talking about though, like a whole bunch of mailboxes at an intersection and they'll probably tell you to put your mailbox there and the mail person will deliver the mail there and it'll be like an intersection on your way in and out of where your property is, wherever that the roads connect up with the bigger roads. If you're out there looking at the property, you'll probably see where they, where they do that on your way in and out of there. This might be the best road here. So let's see which way this road goes. Um, goes a long ways in either direction to, to nowhere. <laughs> so maybe that's why no one wants to buy the property. I'm not sure that's really a road. Maybe it comes from, maybe this way is going to be better. So there are houses over here. One of these feeder roads. So maybe there's street view over here, maybe. So if we look at this intersection, maybe it'll be like a whole bunch of mailboxes. No, still doesn't uh, prove my theory. But so talking to the post office will help you figure that out because that's it, it's vacant. It doesn't have an address. I don't know how better to say it. It's just vacant. It doesn't have an address. Um, if you go to so this is this is uh, Pinell County, Pinell County GIS. That might be another way to do it. This is going to be the county's GIS system. And so if we get in here and we look up, um, let's see if we get this. Let's get the property number. This is APN numbers, assessor parcel number. You said you had the assessor parcel number. So whatever county you're looking in, they might have a GIS system. They're all going to be different. Than, than each other. But this one looks like it's got a search right here. So let's try this search. Let's see if we get the property. Oh, come on, no results. Search APN or first name. Let's try it with it like that. David Venture and Landry start. Um, okay, so well, Geez, I just, maybe it had an address. Property address, it didn't have a property address. So it's, they, the county doesn't have a, an address for this property either. It's got a mailing address, it goes to, you know, my, my box here in town. But that's the mailing address, it's not the property address. So that's another way of looking for it, but it doesn't have, doesn't have an official address, is a short answer. So a lot of these properties don't have official addresses because they're vacant and nobody's built anything on them yet. The mail won't, mail people won't deliver to them. Um, hopefully that makes sense.
Um, so that was from Ringo Starr. Backwoods Bungalow. It's encouraging that there are so many plots being sold on the website that you are running to keep up. Yeah, no, it's good. And it's not just my land. There's, um, I think we've got 21 people right now that are posting properties on the website. And um, a lot of the people that post properties on the website, they grow up out of it. I don't know, for back, lack of better terms, they buy the smaller dollar ones, they buy them, they sell them, they buy them, they sell them a bunch of times. And eventually they start buying bigger dollar ones that probably work better through real estate agents and um, local marketers of the property. And so numerous people that have been on the website for a long time, um, buying and selling land, they drop out over time and they stop posting properties on the website. They sell them all, right? They sell their small ones. And then the, we don't have the horsepower on the website to sell the big ones. They sell the big ones um, through other channels, other marketing channels. And so it tends to be uh, new people coming in and old people as they grow up and grow out of, out of these kinds of properties, they move on. That's just kind of how it is. So right now we're at 21 people subscribed to the website selling properties. I think that's cool. So it's like they graduate after a while, right? <laughs> Greg G, if you bought something as being landlocked, for instance, but that kind of thing can be found by doing research. I have found some of Luke's website, some on Luke's website, but they weren't his properties personally. Yeah, so some of them are landlocked. So sometimes properties are landlocked. So this particular property we got on the screen, we got this GPS or this uh, GIS system. Um, if you look at this GIS map, See if it pulls it up. That thing looks landlocked to me. <laughs> you know, it's a square in the middle of the screen, right? Uh, but if you remember the maps we're just looking at, there's a road that runs right in there. Is that road like papered up? I mean, it's not drawn on the plat maps, at least on this plat map, the road's not drawn in. I mean, there's a road right over my shoulder here. That one's not even drawn in. Like if it was properly drawn into the maps, there'd be like little blue lines along it, like the blue lines of these property lines. That allows you know everybody to go driving through there. You got to go dig into the deeds and all kinds of um, all kinds of paperwork to figure out which routes are legal and which ones are are uh, you know inferred and which ones are used but maybe not papered up. And there's a lot of bureaucracy and legal action, you know, pros and cons about figuring out access to these properties, whether they look like they're legal access or not. I mean, sometimes it, they just look totally landlocked and I go look in the records and there's easements that go this way and that way that connect them up from the roads. Um, I think, so here's, I'll pull up a different example. And hopefully guys, you chime in with some properties because uh, that are economic, like to buy and resell. Cause I keep getting those questions. I need help answering that. For people I'm gonna give land away to someone here on the show hopefully hopefully someone comes up with a property that's economic like that um, so I'm thinking about this one in San Diego so we got these San Diego properties southern San Diego County and if we zoom in on these two um, I just had one fall out of title just a week ago or something I thought it was sold but the people didn't actually have the money um, they thought they could pull it off. So here's two properties. And if you look at this uh, map, there's no roads going to these properties. And if we look at the satellite of this thing, you know, they're here in the bush and there's no road. And it's just kind of an old, old trail, but it's not really. If you go there in person, it's not. There's an old fence line going this way. But there's a property line that runs along here. This, if you look at... Uh, this one, I mean, there's a road coming in here, but it goes to a house right here in the corner. Well, what you know, guy gave me the chance to buy these properties, and I looked at it first, and I said, oh, landlocked, but I'm just gonna go check anyway. I looked at the maps, there's nothing drawn in. I looked at the deeds, and there was nothing about it. And I went back to deeds from like, I think it was in the 50s, these properties were deeded from the federal government or I think it was the state of California. 
that are deeded from the state of California to some homesteaders in the past. And um, the state reserved a 50-foot easement around the perimeter of all these, all these properties. So you got a 50-foot ingress, egress easement and for utilities around each, the borders of each one of these properties. So theoretically, this guy built his house in like the easements. Someone else, his, you know, I guess it'd be his easements, but these people behind him's easements and stuff. But uh, you can see how these, all the, um, the roads in the area are following the lot lines. And most all these people's houses are out of the easements. This guy's house is, he didn't think about that. But that, that makes you access these properties. So there's, there's uh, property markers staked along here. I cut a little path into the property. So you can walk back there and look at the properties and see them. And um, had to, had the family going to buy this one. They've been there, loved it, and um, got the fi got financing set up and everything. And then they just uh, figure it's gonna be the overall, you know, all the bills put together. It's gonna be too much money. Not just they could buy, they could afford the land, but then the house and everything together was gonna be too much for them. So okay. Um, The Full Awakened. Hello to everybody. Thank you, Luke, so much for your response. Thank you, Mr. Herb. Good morning, Luke. I bought two pieces of land through his website, ruralvacantland.com. Thank you, Herb. Um, let's see. Luke, will you be getting any rural vacant land near Los Angeles County? Um, there is a big auction going on this week, or I think it was actually last week. Last week, the um, LA County auction held a big auction. I, I wasn't involved, but a guy that used to be on the website a lot, WG Lands, uh, Willie Goldberg, he was there at that auction. I bet you he picked up a bunch of properties. And um, we used to have tons of them in the backside of Los Angeles that he had on the website. Um, he's he's uh, he's been moving up into bigger dollar properties and um, he's not posting on the website anymore but the ones that we have all this backside of LA right now are all sold except for this 180 acre property that we've got I think we'll get more of them I think they'll keep coming in um, yeah but I don't have any right now Um, got any with stream running water going through it? Yes, yeah, so we were just looking at some stream properties. We've got uh, we've got two of them on a stream in uh, Washington. I mean, there's a lot of water in Washington, right? And if we go up north of Seattle here in the Skagit River area, Skagit County, we've got one here that uh, is got a river or a stream going right through it, and it's got driveways on either side of the stream. So I think you could drive right back in there you'd have to take out some bushes but asking twenty nine thousand dollars for that and it's 6.25 acres and that's in Skagit County Washington another one with a stream is uh, is over here is uh, 3.8 acres it's got a stream along the side of it and that's in Skagit County we got one in Cowlitz County with a stream as well Cowlitz County is in southern Washington let me pull that up let me figure out where that's at um, is it uh, maybe this one? Yeah, so this one here, it's got Spruce Creek in the background. This one's got a creek running through part of the property. And uh, so we're asking 39,997. This is 1.89 acres. It's got a driveway going in there. You can drive back in there. It's got a flat area opened up. It's got an old septic system on it. The guys put a septic system in but never built the house. There's a stream cutting through part of this property over here. And then the fat part over here um, has a stream on the back side of the property. And so there's a driveway coming in. There's utilities. There's houses in the area. Um, and uh, at first I was looking at it. It's like, this one doesn't make sense. It's all going to be underwater. And the stream's going to kill it. But then when we figured out where the stream flows, it seems to make more sense. So it's got a driveway going back in there. You can see neighbors a little bit through the woods. From part of the property it's got a bunch of ferns i'm going to show some pictures yeah so there's here's a rough driveway cut coming off the road getting back into the property um and here's a stream 
So here's a stream in the back of the property. If you can see, there's a little tag here hanging over the water. This is the property line and the fatter part of the property, like the stream's right along the boundary. And then further up the property, a little bit more, the stream comes all the way into the property. So it goes all the way through, it goes through part of your property, you get both sides of the stream, and as it leaves your property, it's on the property boundary. And there's a bunch of moss and things hanging around, just ferns and water flowing through. Um, so I think that's that's a neat looking one on a stream. I'm trying to think of what else is on a stream. So I think that's three of them that are on a stream that we've got on the website that I know of right now. Um, oh, there's one in, um, um, Let me pull it up. In Wyoming, that is, uh, it's got a stream in the back of it. I don't know if you call it a stream, it's more of like an irrigation ditch. Okay, so here's, here's, uh, yeah, you can see this blue line, that's the irrigation ditch. So here's Miller Lane, here's Behin Lane, I guess it is, 17 mile road. So you've got an easement coming off 17 mile road that goes along this property line here, kind of on both sides of this property line. And there's a little driveway inlet coming in here that you could use to, to probably skirt the, there's a fence going down that property line too. So you'd probably, probably be more pleasant to your neighbors to stay on one side or the other. Drive back there and then this property's here with the, with the, um, the water going through the back of it. So it's, it's a lot of horses in the area and um, a lot of farmland, just farmland with horses and uh, mobile home friendly, manufactured home friendly or build a regular home. And we've got street view. You can look at it from these different sides. It's set back a ways. Let's see. Yeah, here's the stream. So let's look down the stream. So here's the, here's the stream we're talking about and the property being in the middle of this field. You probably want to plant some trees out here. Some of all our other neighbors are planting trees. There's no trees. But then, uh, you know, some neighbors growing hay, power lines around the area, people building what they want to build. This side of the stream looks like it needs to get dug out. And then on the other side of the stream is just, uh, just hay fields, people growing what they like to grow. Looks like a good place to grow horses. And the other, this next street over, people have horses. You could see it from the street view on the, where that bush line is on the other side too, if you go mess around with the maps and get street view on it. Um, so that's another one on a stream. Do you have any land, this is Joe Logson, says, do you have any land in Southern Missouri or Northern Arkansas outside city limits? Yeah, so here, that's a good question got lots of properties like that they keep coming and going and coming and going so let's let's go zoom out let's find Arkansas Missouri state line and look at the properties we've got I'm on ruralvacantland.com I'm on the map search part of ruralvacantland.com and you guys can go there there's a link down below in the description of this video and you can go look for what you want to look for but this guy is asking for Arkansas and Missouri state line kind of properties so here is uh, Little Rock it's not showing up on the map but Little Rock's right here and uh, here's Missouri, here's Springfield, Missouri. Here's a state line coming through here. I just got, uh, I got some over here by the Mississippi River just recently with like some houses and mobile home, you know, pretty easy sounding properties. But then over here, as you get up into the hills, as you get into the um, Ozarks, we've got uh, over by Hardy, there is um, Cherokee Village. We've got these two groupings on either side like just outside of Cherokee Village. So just outside the regulations here, we've got, uh, I think there's one of this triangle shaped property left down here. Um, asking $60 a month, you know, and RVs are okay. Um, really cheap land. And then just north of Cherokee Village, we've got a grouping of properties. This is a different neighborhood. It's not Cherokee Village. You can see this neighborhood laid out here. And, uh, you got a bunch of different ones to choose from. You know, titles like no zoning here, <laughs> right? So um, I think these are like $500-ish properties. So these, yeah, well, $700. They're asking $700 on that one. Um, maybe as you get off the road, they're $500. But $700 on the road, five, well, $650. 
Okay, so 700, 650. So there's roads here, but they're just not built yet. So if you look at this map on the screen, it's probably pretty hard to see, but if you go zoom in on it yourself, there's uh, the roads are laid out on the maps, but they're not actually built, um, or they're not built well enough to stick around time. So it looks like they were built once upon a time. They're just, you know, they cut some trees and drove over it with a tractor once or twice. Um, so you'd have to go like improve those roads to be able to use them. So some of these properties have been selling in here. Some are still for sale. It looks like you could get a couple next to each other if you want to get a little bit bigger size properties. And um, yeah, you just have to uh, fix up this road. This road is, I wish I could do a street view. We can't do street view. But if you go out of this this road, I mean, there's some mobile home here. You go down the road a little bit and then it turns to, to paved. When it turns to paved, that's the neighborhood taking care of it. And you see the difference. There's a power line right here that's going down that road. This mobile home's got a power line to it. Mobile home, tiny home, regulation start, paved road, big home. Big home with uh, square footage minimum requirements needed to meet to stay in that neighborhood. So in your, if you're in Cherokee Village, you got all kinds of regulations. So this is just right outside of the regulations of Cherokee Village, yet close to Cherokee Village with the water and the, the boat launch and all kinds of amenities that they have going on. I don't know if you can enjoy their amenities so well without being part of their homeowners association or not, but um, that's for you to figure out. So here is, I think these ones, well, these ones are brand new on the website like this weekend. There's some good sized properties along here uh, but I think they're, they're inside, um, Horseshoe Bend. I think these are Horseshoe Bend. Yeah. A third of an acre, 899 bucks. These are Horseshoe Bend properties. So you, there's a little bit of regulations on these. Um, just across the street would be outside of, of the regulations, but th those ones are actually in the regulations. Um, so that doesn't fit the, uh, the bill. Um, taking notes on who's calling. I got to call some people back. Um, this is Briarcliff neighborhood. There are going to be some regulations on here. These are all pretty much sold anyway. Um, so the other ones are going to be, you're going to want to get into, um, what is this one? I'm not sure which one this is, but I don't know what the regulations are on this one. But Jason Lydiard has these properties in Missouri. That's gonna be the next ones I look at. So he's asking 450 for this one is 0.11 acre. Um, I'm not sure what the regulations on this. He says, we have found no property owner association in this area. So this, there's one in um, Boone County, Arkansas. And then if we go back to the maps, that was 450 bucks, it's kind of a smaller lot in there, but it looks like it's by a bunch of water and stuff that might fit the bill. So over here, we get into Jason Lydiard's properties. I think he's got a bunch of other ones like this that aren't actually posted on the website yet, but I hope he gets them on there. There's 0.83 acres in uh, Ozark County, Missouri. And I think you can do mobile homes and RVs on his properties. Um, $3,000 or owner finance of 500 down and 200 per month for 24 months. Um, it looks like you're gonna have to like fill out the road on these. It's, I think it's a grouping of lots. So there's a bunch of lots in a group. Like if we have a legal description, it's gonna be, yeah. Lots one through five, 42, 44, and 46. Let's see. And he's got numerous lots up here. So take a look at these ones in Missouri. And what county was that? That's in uh, Ozark County, Missouri. So Missouri, we've got Ozark County. We've got a bunch of them that Jason's got. 
Yeah, Ozark County, Missouri. Okay, so let's let's skip on to uh, to some more. I'm waiting for you guys to come up with some economic lots. I want some lots, some properties that are economic. That these people keep asking me, which one should I buy and resell? <laughs> you know, if we could do some research, that would be good. Um. Lisa, first name Seth, says, hope you and your family are safe from all those fires. I'm ex-Cali girl, girl, born and raised. Here you go, doing the peace sign. Good, good, good. Um, yeah, we're, yeah, we're not near any of the fires. We had some winds off the deserts the last couple days and everything dries out. Um, but I uh, know no fires around us. Adam Mixell, good morning, Luke. Good morning, Adam. Joshua Cauldron, good morning, Luke from Arizona. Good morning, Josh. Uh, Luke is very good at follow-up and helping out with any issue. Good deal. Thanks, Adam. I follow up as many people as I can. I just, I don't, I don't give to everybody. Some people probably don't have the same experience as you. I'm sorry for that. If anyone's listening. <laughs> um, Greg G. Planning on driving to Cochise County, Arizona next month to visit a couple new to me properties by the Dragoon Mountains. One of which was purchased last month from Luke. Thank you. Thanks, Greg. That's cool. I think the, the last one by Dragoon Mountain we had was, uh, I think Curtis had that one. You might have bought one from Curtis up there. Um, he's going from Wisconsin. He's going from Wisconsin to Cochise County. There you go. Backwoods Bungo. Okay, today's topic of economics. You recently did some videos of land suitable for mobiles or manufactured homes. It would be interesting to run a test with one of them maybe test out adding a mobile yeah i think that would be a good test like i was looking at um let's uh let's run with that backwoods bungalow is, is saying economics on mobile homes in um in arkansas so i'm gonna pull up you know i've i got haggled guys because i've been i was saying chicook county and uh <laughs> there's a couple different pronunciations of Chicot County. So I thought it was Chicot, but it's French. It's Chicot. It's more of Chicot. And I think it stands for stump because there's a beautiful lake in Chicot County that has a bunch of stumps. So the French called it stump, like stump lake and stump land. And so Chicot County, uh, some of the pronunciations I found online were Chiquit. Chiquit County, and but I think it's more Chico. Sounds more French, and one of the local um, local guys is pronouncing it Chico. So I'm gonna try. To, I'm gonna try to call it Chico. If you know how to say the Chico County, uh, let me know, and we'll try to get it right. But uh, one of the ladies, one of the people on YouTube, was saying she'd call me and give me give me an earful of the right pronunciation of Chico. <laughs> she said she used to live there, born and raised, whatever, which I think is great. Um, so let's see. Chicot County is down in the southeastern part of Arkansas. And um, here we got some lots in Eudora, little town, a couple of these already sold. Um, let's pull one of these up. Okay, so. 0.16 acre, 499 bucks for one of these properties. This is just an example. There's, I, there's a bunch of them to choose from. Um, this particular one, it's got a power line right in the front and it's got a mobile home right next door. I called planning and zoning people. There are no planning and zoning in this county. You get the county clerk and the county clerk says, there is no planning and zoning. You wanna build something, you build something. If you, uh, the one caveat was, you could talk to the judge. She said, talk to the judge and make sure it's not in the flood. So how do you know if it's in the flood? She's like, is it wet? Like, no, it's not wet. Well, then he, <laughs> that's what he's going to ask is if it's wet. Um, you know, simple, simple, simple process to go develop, right? So I don't think you're going to need a septic here because there's so many people around. I'm guessing there's a sewer system. And we could kind of validate that with some street view, I hope. So I'm going to look at street view and hopefully we could take septic costs out of there. We could just hook into sewer. Um, 
So here's the property. So I think it's, it's probably all these weeds here. No one's probably taking care of it. And uh, so I'm guessing there's going to be water lines and sewer lines. But I mean, if you look down the street, I mean, here's an older one. But there might be some newer ones. Yeah, here's a water box right here. So this is the kind of box you usually have out in front of your house when there's water hooked up. And uh, so I think this street's got water lines. So hopefully there's capacity. And I'm looking for a sewer manhole cover. There's a water box across the street. There's water, water box. Let's just go for a drive. See if we can find a manhole cover. It might not actually be in the street. It might be next to it. What's that? There's a sewer. Said something sanitation, right? So I could get on the phone and I could call around Eudora, Power, Water. I could get quotes on all that. Um, where this, where the manhole cover go? <laughs> Here we go. I'm sure it's a sewer, but I, I was hoping you could zoom in. You could see it say sewer. says SEW and then there's a bug splat on it. I don't know if you can see that SEW on there. Some, it says sewer. Um, it's the name of the sewer company, something sewer. Okay, so it's got sewer. So how much does it cost to put a mobile home on this thing? Manufactured home. The uh, There's a couple dealers around Little Rock. Um, there's Clayton. Clayton's one of the biggest names in manufactured homes, man, mobile homes. They're easiest to finance. Um, so I'm just pulling up Clayton. So they've got... Uh, a whole bunch of them. Let's look at uh, sales, red tag sales, probably what we should look at. $91,000, these are the expensive ones. These are fancy ones, $50, $55,000 for basic two bed, two bath, 1,000 square foot, three bed, two bath, 65,000 bucks. Try a red tag sale. I mean, look at this home. I mean, they, they, the technology they get into these things is quite amazing. Okay, let's just do view homes. Let's see if we can pull up the cheap ones. Basically, $50,000 is kind of the numbers I was coming into for a two bedroom, two bath, kind of basic. Um, sort by price, low to high. Let's see what their cheap ones are. $30,000 from starting in the 30s. One bath, one, these small ones. Two bath, one, two bedroom, one bath, 30s. Two bed, one bath. So the basic, basic, basic ones, two bed, one bath, 700, 800 square foot. It's like 30 something thousand bucks. Um, Now, if we go Craigslist, I got Little Rock Craigslist pulled up because I don't know what other Craigslist there are. Um, if 
Fayetteville, Texarkana. Fayetteville is north, western Texarkana, south, um, west. Fort Smith's kind of central to north, west. Craigslist Jonesboro. Um, not exactly sure where that is. I think the Little Rock one's going to be the most central, largest traffic one. Okay, so if we do... Well, I had mobile home for sale. Mobile home for sale, 3,000 bucks. Here's an ugly one, 3,000 bucks. 15 by 52, two bedroom, one bath, nice little mobile home for sale, 3,000 bucks for best offer call. Must be moved within 30 days. Three bed, two bath, here's a better looking one, $28,000. I mean, if we do the economics on the $3,000 one, here's a free one. Here's a real ugly one. It says it's got an extra roof built onto it, which makes it a little more difficult to find someone to move it. $500 fully refundable deposit will be required. If you move it and don't leave a mess or damage my property, I will refund your money. So they want 500 bucks before you go rip it up and tear it out of there. But look at that. You got ugly bugger for 500 or for nothing. $500 deposit. You could move that onto your property. So you could take a $500. I mean, this thing's ugly. Yeah, I scrunch up my face just looking at it. <laughs> I mean, but you put some new windows in there. You put some paint. I mean, you could... It just, it just needs some lipstick. It's really ugly. But you could rent it out. I mean, you lipstick this thing. It even comes with some cooking supplies. Probably $1,500, $2,000 or something to move it. Where is this? We've been looking for like two minutes and we found one for free. So, um, you know, you come and get it style. It's 64. Where are we? There's Conway. It's north of Little Rock. So you, you, you'd be driving a ways to bring it down here. Probably a couple thousand bucks to move the thing over. And then if you go shopping longer than I have, you probably find a better one that's like a better deal. But let's let's say two thousand bucks, you got this thing moved. And now let's go look at, uh, and probably it cost you some money to hook up the utilities, another couple thousand dollars to hook up the utilities and the sewer. You're probably digging a trench to go hook up the sewer, cutting the thing open, hooking it together. Um, Here's a $7,500 one. Maybe a $7,500 one's better than the free one. Maybe it comes with a refrigerator and a stove and stuff. Maybe you can rent it out for even more. But you get the idea. Less than 10 grand, you got a mobile home with uh, probably utilities hooked up and you can start renting the thing. So let's go look at mobile homes for rent. And um, I was looking around, I was figuring Mobile home for rent. And this is Little Rock area, so we gotta try to, let's see if we can get them on a map. There's Pine Bluff. Let's see what Pine Bluff's asking. It's the southmost. Owner finance duplex brick home lots. The mobile home. Um, 725. This is a different part of the state. 600. Mobile home for rent. 350. Holy cow, there's a cheap one. 
Cats are okay. Dogs are okay. Um, one bedroom mobile home for rent in the trailer park. I think you're getting five hundred or six hundred dollars a month. Go do your own research, but I think you're getting five or six hundred dollars a month. And um, I mean, you can start putting that into all kinds of present value calculations. But let's say you got five hundred a month times twelve months, six thousand dollars a month. You're probably kind of break even in a year of buying the property for five hundred dollars getting a mobile home, you know, one of these free ones or cheap ones moved in there, maybe two years, maybe two years worth of uh, money of fix up and making it happen to get your money back, maybe a year and a half, um, depending on multiple variables in there. And then $6,000 a year going on from there. Yeah, the people are gonna come and go. So cut that six, let's say, Let's say by 0.8, maybe it should be even by 0.75 because this is uh, high risk kind of stuff. $4,500 with uh, you know people missing, not paying the rent part of the time and a little bit of fix up, keep painting it, lipsticking the thing. Um, $4,500 a year of cash flow. Now what's, what's the net present value of that? Um, you know, if it was a, if you were buying a business, I mean, it's probably times like a four, four year multiple. I mean, you might be like at an $18,000 kinds of present value. Um, if it's uh 4,500, well, you lose the first year or two times more of a yielding investment. Let's do a, an eight factor. I mean, $36,000. I mean, you're probably, you're probably putting up, um, you know, five to 10 grand and having an asset that's worth cash flowing asset that's probably worth 30, 30 grand, 35 grand. Um, what could you sell a rented mobile home cash flowing for? I'm not sure if you can sell it for that. These markets aren't super rich and healthy, but I mean, if you just ride it and take the cash flow over time, I think it's worth those kinds of numbers. And maybe you could sell them for those. Let's see if we can see what a mobile home, um, for sale is that is rented out. Let's see if we can find one that's on here that's rented out and see what those are selling for. Maybe there's a big gap between the ones that are uh, not rented and rented. So you put it all together and rent it out. Um, display the postings. How do we do this? How do I get out of the map? Close map. Okay. Jeez. $3,000, $7,500, so mobile home for sale. These are all empty ones that they want moved. Um, let's see, there's people selling some lots. Not finding There's a mobile home of five acres, sixty-eight thousand um, dollars. Owner finance with ten acres and pile. Let's see. I'm not finding mobile homes that are rented out for sale. So maybe. You have to do a financial calculation to figure that out. So it might be taking too much time to figure this out. But that's um, Backwoods Bungalow. Let's see if anyone else has a better idea. Ivan, or let's see. Ivan says, what would be the least regulated state with the most fertile land for homesteading? Least regulated state with the most fertile land. There's a good question. Put that one out to the community. Least regulated state with the most fertile land. Wow. 
I mean, I think you're going to be talking like Mississippi Valley um, kinds of land that you can uh, fertile for what? Like, what are you trying to grow? How, how, uh, you're probably not trying to grow date palms, you know, because <laughs> that's a different kind of fertile. Um, it might be Hawaii. I might go point at Big Island, Hawaii. The regulations are pretty darn wide open there. You can grow the heck out of stuff there, um, but you're probably missing out on getting it into different markets. Um, so that's 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 a hard question to answer. I'm going to go with Hawaii for right now. It's pretty easy to use a lot of the Hawaii properties. Let's look at Hawaii ones for just a second. I think if we dug into what you're trying to grow and do, you're probably looking at the the Mississippi Valley states. So Big Island, Hawaii, it's a lot further south than the Mississippi Valley. It allows you to grow a lot more tropical stuff. The land is, I mean, down here it's not as fertile, but over here it gets more fertile, some of these different areas. Um, so maybe I don't have the right one for you on the website right now, fertile ones, but you know, some of the gardens these people have go off. This one here is in uh, the neighborhood. Kapana Seaview Estates. I'm sure I'm saying that wrong. I think this is Aaron English property. He is asking $23,699 or um, he's offering financing too. So the financing is uh, $2,300 down and $399 a month owner financing. Um, I mean, but look at this thing. You got... Uh, palm trees sticking out of it. You can't say that about the Mississippi Valley stuff as much. I think you can plant most anything here. It just grows like crazy. You have a hard time keeping the, the bush and the weeds and the grass and everything cut back. So I think that could be a fun one. But it's not like big farming kind of land either. So, um... Maiden Karagnan. I'm buying two. Looked at one in Elko, Nevada, but haven't used or built anything on the lands yet. Yeah, there you go. Um, there's there's lots of properties out there. Elko's fun. Elko is really low regulations. Really easy land to use. Mr. Herb, think... Think about it if you bought $750 worth of land every month on average instead of paying rent. It is so much property. Yeah, property would just add up. Um, Johnson Osborne. Hey, Luke, do you have any property in northern Florida just east of Tallahassee area? So northern Florida just east of Tallahassee. Northern Florida just east of Tallahassee. Let me kill a bunch of these. Um, Bunch of the ones we had open. Okay, so let's go northern Florida, just east of Tallahassee. Um, I'm pulling the map up. So we're zooming out of this Hawaiian property. The website's trying to keep up. Come on. There we go. So I'm going to zoom in on Florida. Northern Florida, just west of Tallahassee, right? Say west or east? East of Tallahassee. East. Okay, so here's Tallahassee. And we got these Madison counties. I think they're Madison County in this area here. So these are a little bit... So here's Madison, the town. And then uh, we got a couple properties down here. These are Big Oak Trail. That looks sounds like a good place to go hiking. So we got some lots here. This looks like a double lot. Let's see what this is. 0.37 acre in Hamilton County, Florida. Um, I think these ones are really cheap, like five grand or something. Oh, 3,500 is even better. 3,500 bucks or owner financing at $800 down, $150 a month. Um, so we got a couple of them in that neighborhood. There's, you could drive right up and start using those properties. We've got a couple of them over here. What is this one? This is, uh, this one looks like it's bigger. It's two acre pending sale. Okay, so that one might be 
Let's look at the other ones. Two point nine acres. Let's see how much he's asking for these. Five thousand three ninety seven or or finance um, offer owner financing. One point one acres. So we got a couple of them over here in this area. So go look at Hamilton County, Florida. It's just east of Tallahassee. Um, um, this might be the next county over. Let's see what county this is. Yeah, this is still Hamilton County. Hamilton County is a bigger county. So Jason's got a bunch of them in Hamilton County right now. Three thousand nine hundred ninety-seven dollars. So that's Hamilton County, Florida, just east of Tallahassee. Um, hello, Luke and fams from Utah. Hello. Uh, so. Um, OK Go is saying, uh, people say Cochise County is one of the best. I, if, I, if I lived near there, I'd definitely look there for properties. Exactly. Vibes of truth. I am fascinated by the prices down in the U.S. It's like a dream up in Ontario. A 1K property would, would buy 10K minimum. <laughs> yeah. Canadians have different, different land trade. Um, See, Joe Logston, leaving a phone number. Um, let me write this down. And Sandra Getter is saying, Luke, I've made several attempts to call you to close on the land acquisition that we have started with you and your company. Will you please call me to discuss? Yes, Sandra. notes to call you to and uh, Nick S good morning Luke any updates on the 2.65 acre property near Seattle so Nick yes Nick um, I think I just missed a call while we're on the show from the title company about that property we're still pushing on it um, should close I think it's set to close on the 6th or the 7th of November um, and I think it's gonna be if they send me money and I send you money because they won't, they don't seem to want to put more names in there that they're sending money to, if that makes sense. Chris Kane, Shelter Cove, Whitehorn, cost for hooking up water, gas, electric, but you can have a yurt, etc. Chris Kane, Shelter Cove, Whitehorn, cost for hooking up water, gas, electric, but you can have a yurt, etc. Um, so I think he's asking, are you asking about the cost? Chris and Shelter Cove, because Shelter Cove has some costs for hooking up water, gas, electric. Um, but I'm not sure if you can have a yurt there. You might be able to. I'm not 100% sure. Wood Booger says, sup, Luke. <laughs> Mr. Herb, some requirements for an address require a survey such as New Mexico. Yeah, so some places want uh, the land surveyed for an address. I've never heard of that. Um, maybe... Maybe they have it in New Mexico. I think it's pretty much up to the local post office. They make up the rules. It's not like a national post office regulation from my understanding. It seems to be a little bit different every post office you go to. Um, Luke, do you have any rental properties for sale in Arizona? Ringo Stride, have any rental properties for sale in Arizona? No, I don't have any rental properties for sale in Arizona. I focus in on vacant land. So vacant land, um, buying, buying land, and then you could go build something on it and rent that out. But I don't have any properties that are like rented out or ready to rent out. Um, another way of doing that is to buy land and sell it on terms. Like some of the guys will go buy land off the website. And that was kind of the topic of today's, uh, today's call. Um, was uh, you could buy land off the website and you could go sell it for terms. Like that 20 acre one we were talking about before, I was asking, I think it's 17 grand. You know, multiple people have offered owner financing or asked for owner financing on it. If I was offering owner financing on that one, it would have been sold a long time ago. So if you bought it for 17 grand and turned around and sold it for, I don't know, $5,000 down and then $500 a month for the rest of forever, 
you could get a lot more economics out of the property than, than uh, the 17 grand you pay for it or make up your own numbers of what kind of numbers return you'd like to get and post it online, put it out there and ask for it and see if people will go for it. See if you get somebody that goes for those numbers. They would much rather have a low down payment and uh, payments over time than coming up with a whole bunch of money in the front end. It's, it's a lot of people in our society love to do that. So you could do that with economics of the property and you could probably double, triple, quadruple the price of the property. And um, the people that buy it on the payment plan are happy as can be. They, they think they're getting the best deal ever. That, that was their only way to get a shot at buying one of those properties. And when you're buying a property at deep discounted prices, not retail prices anyway, you got a lot more room for error. And um, then uh, the people that are buying it on terms are buying it for like retail or even less than retail. They're really taking advantage of you. So it's a win-win for everybody and um, it seems to work pretty well. So that's, that's another way you could turn most all of these properties into rental properties. I don't know if it's not really a rental per se. Um, sometimes people don't end up paying off the payments and you get the property back and you do it again. But that's not really a rental. It's kind of like a, almost like a rent to own. You don't sign it over to them until they're done paying for it. And then you can take that money along the way, go invest it into other properties and do it with other properties. So you can create a, a stream of cash flows off of your your assets is not rent like harmonic rent would be. It's more of a depreciating asset as you're liquidating them uh, to get the cash flow. But the yield between buying and selling them would be considered your rents. I guess you could look at it that way. And you could turn a portfolio of these properties into uh, a rent paying asset, if you will, if you understand that that logic that I'm coming from. Um, so that's, that's a one way to make money off of land that I think is one of the easiest ways without changing anything, without doing much of anything but the price and terms that you sell it at. You can bump up the value, the prices of these properties a lot and take a lot of money home over time by offering that service. And even when you go offer it on payment plans at two, three, four times the price you bought it for, lots of times people will come and offer you cash for the property or they will make two or three payments and get get to know the property before they just pay it off. And in lots of the cases, you get cashed out of those things a lot shorter, a lot less time than you think when you offer the time, the payments over time. So maybe that makes sense, Ringo. Um, Miss Lane says hello there. <laughs> a good Halloween. Uh, I'm how to shell cheap lots in volume, less l loss than high dollar ventures that may not sell for cost or at an adequate time yeah so he's he's thinking m how to shell saying that the best economics are lots of the cheap ones in volume andre w is still still live yeah still live <laughs> you're still going i'm trying to answer questions and get down to giving some land away um those are the ones i want or Bakersfield, California. Okay, I'm missing something here. Jason Macy, Luke, I think the 40 acres just north of Duchesne's, Utah is a good one to buy and resell after splitting. Okay, so Jason Macy. Um, let's take a look at that one. So, Duchesne's. So, Utah... For my understanding, is pretty pretty open about splitting up property. I've never split any property in Utah. And I'm sure it changes by county and different parts. The Shanes is over here somewhere, right? I'm not exactly sure where that one is, but I think it's in this bottom corner. It's a nice looking one. Kane County. I think it's going to be, maybe it's not, maybe it's up here. Maybe it's this one. Duchesne. Yep. I was looking in the wrong place. I don't know Utah very well. Um, Starvation State Park. Classic. It must be the old wagon train. The viable 40 acres just north of Duchesne's. Okay. So 40 acres and you could split it up. Daniel Homeland's got this one on the on the property. He's asking twenty six thousand nine hundred dollars for this property. Let's 
looks like you've got a road going in there, a couple houses in the area. Wonder what people are, um, what they're doing with it in the area. I'm going to open up Parcel Fact. And what I'm going to get here is a map of the neighbor's property's lot lines. If I do this right. And I'm going to see if they're making like one acre property. This isn't the official, official way to do it. This is just like a high level, um, while we're on the live call, a quick, quick and dirty way to look at what we might be able to split it up into without going to check the regulations and stuff. And it might say here on the website. Zone A5 can be subdivided down to five acre parcels. Okay. So theoretically we could split it four ways if there's enough there, but at least three. How do you spell this county? Um, D-U-C-H, I had it wrong. Duchenne County, Utah. I'm sure I'm pronouncing it wrong too. <laughs> we'll let this thing load. I'll go look at this for a bit. It's 26,900. I wonder what we could sell five acres for in the area. Let's see if we can pull that up at the same time. So here's the map coming along. I don't know why it's not showing me lot lines of the neighbors. Oh, here it is. Oh yeah, so here just north of here, they're making Oh, these are still bigger. I mean, this one looks like it's cut up a bunch. Just south of it, they're making 10 acres. I mean, but look at this, this, this over here. I mean, you got a bunch of uh, what looks like people started to split up the properties. I mean, I don't think those are oil wells. These are roads where you, you know where you could put a house in, making one acre, two acre. Nah, it's probably four or five. It's probably five acre housing lots. And this one up here to the north, it looks like someone else made a bunch of housing lots over here too, and it doesn't look like the lines have been totally updated. Um, so it might just be slow at the county and making it happen. They might be built on already too. But somebody else is on top of this, making it happen. Um, let's see what size I have here. Any size. Lots land sold for sale. Let's see if we get some for sales on there. So where are we at? We're in here, this region somewhere. Looks like this has been knocked up a bunch. Doucheness. So are these all little housing pads or are they drilling for natural gas here or something? These look like housing pads. These are all residential pads. So someone's been scraping out a bunch of residential spots around the area. It looks like it's starting to fill in. It looks like they're spreading a bunch of areas. 
So it's right up here at the corner of this, this body of water. So if we get on here, um, is it this body of water? So I think we're right up here at the corner of this body of water. This is the same body of water. Yeah, so it looks like someone's trying to sell some of these lots for 20,000 bucks. They're trying to sell 10 acres for 20,000 bucks. 18 days on Zillow. This is one of the long ones. It's probably just south of where the property is. 115 views, no saves. Water and power are near or in the street. This is property just over 10 acres, close to grocery stores, churches, and recreation. Um, yeah, I don't know. Maybe they're... So 20000 bucks. So we'd be at 40000 bucks if we split it in half and sold it two if we could get them off the same price these people are going for which is probably hard to do. You probably got to go for less than that. Um, if you go for uh, five acre lots, maybe you could sell them for 10 or $15,000. If you sold them for 10 grand a piece, you'd be at 40,000 bucks. Um, that might make more sense. It might be easier for people to bite off. So maybe you sell them for 40, you split it four ways, sell it for 40 grand. And um, it costs you twenty six thousand nine hundred to buy the property. There's, there could be some economics in there. Okay, so that's for Jason Macy. Um, let's keep looking. Uh, anything in Nashville? I don't have any Nashville right now. Whatever happened to your A-frame idea? I know, right? I gotta go build an A-frame. My wife keeps moving around, <laughs> moving properties. We're living right by the beach now, and um, I like, I love living by the beach. It's it's beautiful. I take the dog for a walk on the beach and get my feet in the water and watch the pelicans smash into the water, grab fish and stuff. I I love that. I mean, there's some cool stuff about Southern California. Um, that I would miss in lots of other places. I would like to have a second property, um, someplace that's reachable that I could build an A-frame on. Um, one of my favorite ones that I've got going on right now, um, a partner put up the money for, but I, I wish I could buy it from him, is uh, I think it'd be a great one for an A-frame. I just, I don't really have the time, but it would be a lot of fun. I'll, I'll show you this property. It's uh, San Diego County, top of Mount Palomar. So I'm over here, I'm in Encinitas. Where's Oceanside, here's Encinitas. So I'm, I'm right down here. Right, this is me. And then going back up into the mountains is Palomar Mountain. So Palomar Mountain is like the closest big mountain around. It takes about an hour to drive over here, maybe more. And you can see the road getting up here is just like crazy sauce. It's beautiful, great views, <laughs> it's, it's really neat. So we've got state parks and there's just parks and little ponds and streams and stuff up here at the top of the mountain. If we go to satellite view, you can see that the, the road going up the mountain. And then it comes around a little bit and then um, over there's a road that comes back through here. This is uh, Ridge Crest, I think, or whatever it's called. Um, Ridge line, crest line. Crest line comes in here. And there's a lodge. This is like Palomar Lodge, bed and breakfast kind of thing. Across the street from there is a driveway. And this driveway comes down to this property. And then out in front of this property is Overlook. Let's see if we can bring it up. So here's Kika Meek Overlook. And so this is like, let's see if some pictures come up here. It, uh, I don't know, doesn't work very well. But so there's an overlook just down the hill from this property, right? 
and it overlooks the ocean, big ocean views, islands, and down into Mexico. And um, it goes, you know, you can see you can see all over the place on a clear day from this overlook. This property is up on the hill, looking down at the overlook, so you get all that view plus a little bit of extra height over the top of it. It's like 5,500 foot elevation. And if we zoom in on this property, it's got a little cabin on it. Um, you could fix up the cabin and make something out of it, but I think you could build, you could use that as like storage or a place to stay and work on it as you go. And I just lowered the price on this too, so it's not ninety-eight thousand anymore, seventy-six thousand. I got to update that. Get that changed. So. It's got, uh, it's got some old junk on the property, but it's got these spectacular views. It's got some trees in the way. I mean, you could knock some trees out. Here's the overlook just down the hill from there. Um, there's a driveway coming into the property. I mean, the driveway could be improved, but uh, it's got a driveway. It's got an address, 22225. The fire code requires you to have that out there. It's got a water line in the, in the road, but the capacity is taken up in the water lines. You can't really tap into the water line and add water the property you got to get water delivered or or uh, drill a well um it's got a little uh little greenhouse a little shed um, it's got solar panels going on it i mean the, the power is still working on the thing um there's some pictures from the area some area shots i got more pictures of this thing i need to get more pictures on the website Yeah, so I need to get more pictures on the website. It's a local gas station. I'll get some more pictures on the website. Um, so there's there's the property. I think that one would be a great one for a, an A-frame, for me anyway because it's close to where I am and it's great views and it's just so quiet, you get up there. So here's from a parking lot of the Overlook and the property is like near this house, but not that house. It's like up here on the hill, um, overlooking the Overlook. These are the kinds of views from the Overlook. I mean, it's just big views. It's got like Mexico down there and the coast out here. The ocean's out here. It's kind of hazy, you can't see it when this picture is taken, but this this placard shows you like all the, you know, the different bits of the coastline and all the way down into Mexico. There's a driveway and it's overgrown, you know, it's a sideways picture. <laughs> it's the shed or the, the building that's up there. Got to get these pictures changed so they're not sideways. There's a lot of old, old junk in there. I cleaned a lot of the junk out, polished it up a bit. Um, Need to fix some of the, the, the pictures. Yeah, just pictures, lots of pictures of the, of the thing are on there. So you can go look up that property and look at it on your own. So she, the office just uploaded those pictures right now. So they're just, they're fixing them and getting them uh, straight, straightened out. Um, okay, so back to the comments. Steven Butala here, love your show, Luke. Hey, <laughs> there's Land Academy. We got Steve on the line. So we've got a link down below um, in, the, uh, in the description of this video to go to Land Academy. Uh, Steve has done a, a great job of putting education together and a program, a live event, and he's got websites that you can go talk about deal and land, like landinvestors.com. Um, he's got a website, Land Pin, you can post properties on. He's got a bunch of properties for sale on there. And, uh, 
He's just got this great education and program service, and we just used one of his pieces of software to look up a property's parcel fact. And so someone was asking earlier on in this show, how do you look up an address for a property? A parcel fact's a much more automated way of doing it. He's got a bunch of good services to buy, sell land, figure out land. And so if you don't know Land Academy, here's the, here's the creator of Land Academy. He's on the show, Steve, uh, Steve Butala. And so thanks, Steve. Thanks for all you've done to teach me and show me and help me along and answer questions along the way. He's been a great resource, a great piece of help. So he's the, the, the real knowledge behind this stuff. Um, so it's cool to have him on the show. Thanks, Steve. Thanks for coming online. A try, the topic of the show was looking for the most economic land to flip on ruralvacantland.com. And so I've got a couple guys chiming in. Backwoods Bungalow, Jason Macy, Jason with the Utah one, Backwoods, Backwoods Bungalow, um, saying some of the cheaper mobile home lots in Arkansas. Maybe the economics on those would be the sweetest. I think the turn them into cash flow economics would probably be the sweetest on those Arkansas mobile home lots. I think the, uh, the quick cash... Um, flip, split flip with the Utah one might be, might be quicker cash in your pocket. Um, I think the Arkansas ones you could do in more volume, um, might be easier to sell a mobile home that's rented out cash flowing than to sell five acres in Utah. I'm not exactly sure. I'm still thinking about it and I hope other people will chime in. We're looking at properties, compare and contrast. We're trying to look for the most economic stuff to flip on ruralvacantland.com. So people keep asking me about it, and I keep pointing out properties, but I thought it'd be fun to have the audience chime in and point out properties, what may, might be the most economic beneficial properties to buy and sell, buy and resell, or fix up and resell it, however you want to do it. Uh, Adam Mixell saying, Luke, looking for more land in Izzard County. Do you have anything? Yeah, we got some more Izzard County properties coming up. I got this database system keeping track of properties and there's there's a couple hundred of them in there right now that are ready to get posted onto the website. But the back office is only only has like so much time in the day to keep making these listings. And so they're making the listings and cranking them out as fast as they can go. I think they did like 20 of them or something yesterday. I don't think any of those were in um, Izzard County, uh, but I know we've got some Izzard County in the hopper that are paid for that are they're contracted up. They're not totally deeded into my name yet, but uh, they've agreed to be and they're pretty close to be and uh, we'll get them up for sale with a caveat that something might still go wrong and the settlement's going to be like another month or two um, on those pretty soon. Maybe even today some of them might get up or sometime during this week I think some more of the Izzard ones will get up on the board because yeah we're sold, like sold out of Izzard. Um, Adam Mixel. I have property in Horseshoe Bend. It's beautiful. Yeah, that's good. There's a good lake there, good bass fishing. I'd like to go fishing on Diamond Lake, and that'd be fun. i got to have trees, lots of trees to be, be happy. There we go, Angela, lots of trees. Ivan says, where's the most fertile land with the least zoning restrictions on the East Coast? Okay, so I don't think he liked my Hawaiian idea. <laughs> he doesn't like to grow flowers. Um Where's the most fertile land with the least zoning restrictions on the East Coast? So the East Coast, I mean, I try to avoid the East Coast properties because I just, because they got more restrictions and regulations. And if, if I'm selling land, the stuff that has the least restrictions and regulations is the easiest to sell because it's the least questions I have to answer. <laughs> so I'm laughing, but that's the truth, right, guys? I don't want to answer a thousand questions about the zoning on these properties because it, that gets really complicated. Um, so I found the ones with the least zoning sell faster because there's less questions to ask, less questions to answer, right? So like these Arkansas ones I'm telling you about, like you just stop by the courthouse and the judge asks you if they're wet or not. And he says, okay, go build on them. They're not wet, go build. Like just simple, 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 right? Um, East Coast. Can I say the East Coast of Texas? That's not the East Coast you're looking for, but Texas doesn't have much of any regulations on developing the land either. And some of it, especially if you get down towards the, you know, down towards the Gulf, it can be quite fertile. Um, Louisiana, maybe. I'm trying to think. Mo really fertile, least regulations. 
I mean, the really fertile stuff like in the Carolinas, I mean, that's some of the first land in the U.S. to get started with regulations. They've been piling regulations on top of regulations a lot longer than we have in the West because people have been working on those properties a lot longer. And they just, they came up with more problems. And every time they come up with a problem, they come up with more regulations. And they just keep piling regulations up. So I don't know how to answer that. Um, I just don't. I don't have a good answer for you. I'm sorry. The more west you go, the least regulations, generally. <laughs> so the furthest east with the least regulations, I think it's going to be these Arkansas ones, or probably someplace Mississippi that I don't know about, or Alabama. I mean, really fertile soil down there, but I just I just, I don't know the deals well enough there to say. Um, funny, if old Ed Norton popped his head up from the cover, I think you're talking about Mobile home guys, Ringo Starr. Luke, my sister-in-law was looking at land in Riverside for a mobile, but the agent said the mobile had to be new than 10 years and had to be retrofitted for sprinklers and couldn't be financed. <laughs> it's got a, this is California for you. Um, so, I mean, why, why can't it be financed? Is she trying to get it in like a certain neighborhood or something? Like, what do you mean you can't be financed? Like, what kind of... That sounds ridiculous. That sounds like an agent that doesn't know what they're talking about. Or they're talking about a specific neighborhood, not the whole county. Like, the county can't say you can't finance your mobile home. I mean, that's, that's just ridiculous. So I think there's something wrong with that. I mean, they could say it's got to have sprinklers because of all the fire dangers. I understand that. Um, newer than 10 years, a lot of places put regulations on the mobiles that want newer ones. I was just hearing about one of the guys um, talking about the, a lot of the newer regulations against mobiles aren't so much ruling out mobiles, but they're putting more requirements on mobile or manufactured homes that are requiring them to have different shapes. You know, not the old box shape, which we had those thousand dollar mobiles in Arkansas back up. You know, the pictures with a flat roof just a box with a flat roof. They're just trying to maximize the square footage you could get down the road, right? Without a bridge taking the roof off on your way there. Um, those those are some manufactured homes. Those are from like the 80s, 70s, 60s. But as you start getting into the 90s and 2000s, they, they start having a little bit more shape to them, a little bit artsier, trying to get somewhere between a house and a manufactured home or a mobile home and trying to look more like a house and less like a mobile home. We're starting to call them manufactured homes. So I think if you go down that line, you're gonna be a lot better off. And what I, I would tell your sister to do is go to one of the local mobile home dealers. Let's, let's see what we got. Riverside County, because there's a bunch of them around Riverside. One of my friends bought some land, Riverside County, to grow marijuana on. And this is before the regulations really started opening up. Bought these five acre properties. Um, the regulations changed, the economics and growing marijuana changed, and uh, look at this, new homes from $26,000, Pacific Manufactured Homes, license bond, so here we're in, there's Lake Elsinore, Let's try these guys. Mobile home dealer. Got the most good comments out of all of them. Ma Williams. Celebrating 50 years. So look at this. Here's the, here's the old one. Here's the new one. So this is a good example. Um, let's see if we can blow this up. Riverside County. Riverside County probably doesn't want these, these things. That looks like a picture of the one we just saw for free or maybe it was a $2,000. I think that was the free one. That looks like the free one we just looked up on Craigslist in Arkansas. So these are the free ones, these are the old ones. And now over here on the other side of the screen, you got the new ones. This new one, like way over there, well, way over there, I can't reach that far. It, it looks like a home, you can't even tell it went down the road. Like it showed up in a couple pieces and they hooked it together. That's a manufactured home that uh, blends right in with modern homes and in other areas. Riverside County's asking for more of those or all kinds of neighborhoods and places that do mobiles that have any more updated regulations are looking for those colorful, fancy ones over there. Um, not these ones right over my head here that looks like, 
yeah, I don't know. Child molester, crazy land. I should watch what I say. But you know what I mean, right? Um, so those these newer ones over there, if you go to one of these dealers, if you go to this Ma Williams place in Riverside County that's done 50 years of these things, they'll show you these newer style ones and uh, see what you got. So here's some pictures of them. Look at these things. There's a couple mobile home parks by the beach uh, where I live here that have these, you know, these kinds of mobile, these manufactured homes. And um, they sell for a couple, you know, half million dollars because of the properties they're on more than the home. But when people buy them, live there and love them. It's a much different uh, picture than you might think of mobile home. Like you can't call them mobile homes anymore. They're manufactured homes. You don't roll roll one down the road with a garage in it, garage on it, right? Um, look at the, the where the thing blends into the ground. Like it's not a sheet of plywood anymore. I mean, they blend right in. You can't tell where the ground stops and the house starts. I mean, it's you can't tell where you, someone's gonna drive away with it anymore. Um, Yeah, Angela says, Ringo, star, wow. How does Shell says, some can't be moved without newer single roofs in North Carolina. Yeah, I mean, the, the regulations have been popping up. Um, I'm a shed to home con conversion, maybe cheaper and can be moved to most properties. Yeah, no restriction properties. Um, notes on who's calling here um, renting space for RVs is always paused backwards useful information from that mobile home search thanks fluke yeah backwards bungalow so it's uh, you know you can buy these things or get these things for next to nothing and move them over I'm just touching the surface you can do a lot more research from there Chris Kane no I went up there it was was going to buy your your lot you had. Okay, good. Jay, I'm still looking for a small piece in Oklahoma. Yeah, so I think we just have bigger ones in Oklahoma right now. Chris would love to live there. Yeah, Shelter Cove that is. Okay, so Chris talking about Shelter Cove. I'm not sure I have any more Shelter Cove. Let me think about that. I think they're sold out. So Shelter Cove is this cute little neighborhood north of San Francisco um, that has generally cheaper land. I'm all sold out right now. But you've got these great views of the ocean and it's got a boat launch down here and the lots in the back, they're really expensive or hard to put septic into. Um, so that those lots really go, usually go really cheap. The lots in the front have sewer lines so they usually cost a little bit more or you, people don't know the difference and some of them, some people price them for like they're a lot in the back. but. Um, this one is, uh, you know, I, I like this area. I think that'd be a neat place to, to have a second home, um, the Shelter Cove area. So I hope to have more properties up there someday. Jonathan Lane, Luke, what does assigned properties mean on your website? Assigned, assigned properties mean on your website. So assigned properties. So if we're looking at title, maybe like the title part of the website, um, assigned. I'm not sure where we're looking at that, but uh, so what I do sometimes when it comes to buying properties and assigning them is I make an offer to buy a property and I say, that's great. Let's, uh, let's buy the property. And I don't always have enough money to buy all these properties. It's a lot of money to put together, but keep buying land all the time. And a lot of people say, Luke, I would love to invest in your deals. And so what I do is I match the buyer and the seller together. And, uh, you know, the buyer is like a money person, someone putting up the money to, to um, finance the deal. And so I've got a contract with the person that wants to sell the property, and I've got a contract with the person that wants to put up the money for the property. And that kind of contract is what I call an assignment. Maybe that's what you're referring to. I assign the property over to an investor, and I keep a piece of the, of the deal for pulling it off and putting it all together. And so in that fashion, I can take on some of these bigger dollar deals with other people's money and uh, pull them off and make the person that's putting the money up a handsome return and make some return for myself for making it all happen. 
and get the money to the person that wants to sell the property. So it's a win-win all the way around. The person that ends up buying the property to use it later on, um, you know, usually buy those through title, um, they end up paying the investor person that put up the money and I get money kicked out um, usually from title for putting it all together. So that's, that's what I think of an assignment. I'm not sure where you've seen it on the website. Maybe it's on some of the title actions on there. Um, Angela, quick and dirty, LOL. Yeah, quick and this is kind of going a little bit long here. We're gonna, I'm gonna cut this off pretty soon. Looks like those parcels cut up a bunch has oil well pads. Yeah, those might be oil well pads in that part of Utah. That might be, um, they have some heavier oil um, deposits in that part of Utah. Like the trucks that move it are really specialized trucks. They have to heat the thing and keep it hot so they don't, so the oil doesn't solidify. And I've heard some of those trucks break down on the road and the stuff solidifies in the truck. And like, you basically got to get rid of the whole tank. You can't clean them out. You can start over. Really expensive. Hard to do. The oil fracking pads. Uh, pads. Need property this week, LOL. There you go. JM, nice. M, how to shell. A frame heaven. A frame heaven. Yeah, exactly. A frame heaven would be that uh, that property up on the hill or um, Shelter Cove, the one I got on the, well, this, we'll switch it over to this screen here. There's Shelter Cove. There's a bunch of A frames in that neighborhood too. E L O one Janet, I think the sign means he accepted it to sell for them and he, his site and split the net. Yeah, exactly. Backwoods Bungalow, the Utah split does look better. So, um, Backwoods Bungalow thinks the Utah split economics looks better than the going mobile home in, in Arkansas. Um, Rod Hall, any lands with access, some attributes, more acres, the better and affordable. Jack Lutala. <laughs> okay, Rod Hall, any land with access, some attributes, more acres, the better and affordable. So this is, he's quoting Jack Lutala. Is on the call or was, I don't know if he still is or not. But Rod Hall's on the website too and he's, he's saying any land with access, some attributes, more acres, the better and affordable. So this is probably the best stuff to flip. So they're trying to answer the question of the best stuff to flip. Buy low, sell, sell, you know, buy really low, sell low <laughs> kind of pricing to make money in the spread. Um, any land with access, some attributes, attributes being like a view, um, trees, mountains, uh, you know, acres, acres is an, I guess could be an attribute. Um, water, utilities, all the things that could be nice about a property and affordable. Uh, Adam Mixel, I say Baxter County is a good flip spot. Yeah, so Baxter County, um, Adam, So, so far, Jason's like the only one that's pointed out a very specific property. Backwoods is saying generically, Adam's kind of saying generically, but I, I like Adam's um, idea of the Baxter County. I've bought a bunch of Baxter County properties and I've sold them for higher prices hundreds of times, many, many, many times. I'm all sold out of Baxter County right now. I think there might be one or two on the website that somebody else has posted on the website. But uh, let's see. So Baxter County is in northern Arkansas, and we keep running into Arkansas because it's just so darn cheap, guys. Arkansas, you want to talk about cheap land, Arkansas is like the mother of cheap land. So um, Mountain Home, Baxter County. So Baxter County is right over here. Well, I see one green one in the middle there. There's one green one left in there. Where'd that one come from? 0.1 acres, $500 or $100 down. So we've got uh, one property left in Arkansas, $500 or left in Baxter. Let's see if it's actually for sale. Um, oh, this one's sold out. So it's bad data. Thought we had one left. Somebody bought it. Let's fix that. Um, I 
The uh, so we're we're all sold out. Yeah, so that'd, that'd probably be a pretty good place to buy land, sell land. We're all sold out. I mean, you could buy them for lots of times. We had the five hundred dollar properties. I had them for a hundred dollars on here. I had a bunch of them for hundred dollars at one time. But you buy them for like five hundred dollars and sell them for a hundred dollars a month for twenty four months. I mean, you could totally do those pretty much all day long and um, generate some pretty cool cash flow. But uh, I'm going to go with Jason Macy so far because he's he's like the one pointing out a specific property that's for sale on the website. And that's kind of what I was asking. A specific property that's for sale on the website you get the best economics out of. Um, Dennis Lane, I like southeast corner of Arkansas. Southeast corner, yeah. So Chicot County, I'm trying to say it right. Hopefully it's saying it right. Chicot County. Um, it's, uh, it's darn cheap, guys. So darn cheap. Uh, Rod Hall, oops, misspelled your name, Stephen Jack, <laughs> Janeth Lane, Maine, I think, yeah, Landon, MN, anytime soon, so Minnesota, guys asking about Minnesota land, we don't have any Minnesota land on the board right now, we've got uh, um, some of the dealers, I don't know if you remember, I did a live uh, live mailer in Minnesota one time with, uh, um, <laughs> I can't remember his name, so bad. Oh, can't remember the guy's name. He's from Brooklyn, New York. Really nice guy. He was posting properties on the website for a while. And uh, we did this mailer, and he, he bought a bunch of uh, properties in Minnesota in the past, and he's putting them up for sales, buying them, selling them. And then he got a speeding ticket from <laughs> the state of Minnesota. I shouldn't laugh. They have some rules about, like, if you buy and sell more than five properties a year, you need a license. And so Minnesota is, they got protectionism going on for their real estate agents. They don't like guys like us coming in there and dealing land. Um, Hudson, Maine, near Bangor. Yeah, beautiful land, so similar to Nova Scotia. Yeah, it's beautiful up there. I don't have any land up, uh, up that way. Um, I've heard about a couple guys doing land deals up there. I've never, I've never done it. I used to do uh, road trips when I was in high school from northern Michigan. I went to school over here in this peninsula, the Lulana Peninsula. I used to drive from here, drive around, and drive up through Sault Ste. Marie and shoot over. Um, I did that route. I've also done the through Detroit route and over. This route was crazy long. You go through Ottawa, Montreal, up to Quebec. We used to go to Quebec for uh, the Gnome Festivals. I think it's in February. It's like their Mardi Gras. And you get this little, uh, you know, snowman thing. It's like the, the um, design of the city or the emblem of the city. And you go explore town. You guys ever ever been to that? It's ice carving and dog sledding and like all the winter sports jammed into a an old city downtown. It was fun. It was really fun. Um, Fred Basket land here in Iowa, Minnesota, Illinois, and Nebraska. Very high cost farmland. Yeah, it is. Thank you. Cochise has been good to you. Yeah, Cochise has been good. They changed the laws here um, just recently. So it's a lot harder to split up Cochise and resell Cochise anymore. Okay, so we're getting down to the bottom. I'm going to go with Jason Macy. Jason is pointing out the property in Utah. Um, I think he was the only one that pointed out a specific property that says, you know, let's go look at the economics of this thing. And we're like two and a half hours into this call. It's getting a bit ridiculous long. <laughs> and I want to say thank you to everybody that's that's signed in, that's listened, that's asked questions, that's been involved. Um, it's, uh, I, I think it's great. I think it's great that you guys are asking good questions and you're joining in and you're speaking your mind, good, bad, and ugly. I got a bunch of people here to call back. I'll probably be calling people the rest of the day. And, um, yeah, figuring stuff out, fixing a couple things, and, uh, yeah, returning calls. So thank you, everybody. Jason Macy, you've won before. Let's, uh, you, you know how to do it. If you would email my assistant, Gillian, Gillian at ruralvacantland.com, G-I-L-I-A-N, at ruralvacantland.com, and say you won. She's probably watching today, too. So just say you won, and uh, I'm going to need your contact information. I believe I have already have it, but let's update it anyway with what name you want this property to be in, what you want on the title. Do you want it to be your name? Do you want it to be your kids or something else? Whatever. Put a name on the title that you want to own this property in. 
Hopefully it's something that you can sign on so we can go resell it if you want to resell it. Um, and then uh, also mailing address for future taxes on the property. So it might come in with taxes. I'm going to do the paperwork. I'm going to mail the paperwork to you for you to sign because the state got mad at me doing it without you guys signing it. So I'm going to have you sign it. And then uh, I'm going to give you an envelope and everything to ship it to the state and um, state of Arkansas. You get some property from the state of Arkansas. And it's the cheapest, easiest way. I know to give away some properties. I'll pay for it. You just got to sign and then you get some land. You can do whatever you want with it. So thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Congratulations, Jason, for pointing out, I think, the most economic property on the website. And uh, it's this, the one we came up with, pointed out by you guys, not by me. I probably have some different opinions. <laughs> is uh, Duchesne's County, Utah. And it looks like you could split it up four ways. And um, you probably... Not 100% sure, but I think you just write a new legal description. I'm not sure about the regulations on splitting it there. And um, sell the pieces off. So I think you could sell them for looking at the market. Ten grand would probably be on the cheaper side. You'd be the cheapest stuff in the area. And so if you sell four of them at ten grand a piece, you could get forty grand out of it. Um, the property's up for sale for $26,500. And uh, so there's a good spread in there. It could probably be minimal amount of work and take out some good money in between. So if you guys want to go for that, that property is in Duchesne's County, Utah. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Everybody, it's Luke Smith, realvacantland.com. If you want to see more videos like this, hit subscribe. Keep them coming out into the future. See you again next Monday morning at 9 a.m. Talk to you soon. Bye.